In the 1970s, the first commercial cultivation of tree tomatoes began in the northern part of the Department of Antioquia, located between 2,000 and 2,600 meters above sea level. Its great acceptance among consumers in the country also allowed areas such as the south of Huila to successfully dedicate themselves to the production and commercialization of this species. These areas where tree tomatoes are grown are largely inhabited by farming families that manage two or more crops and most of them grow them on small plots of land of no more than two hectares. We are in the farm El Robledo, in the municipality of Entrerios, Zancudo, at a little more than 2,500 meters above sea level. This crop has approximately 1,170 trees, it is in almost 2 hectares, at a distance of 4 meters between streets and 3.5 meters between trees. It has a development stage, this lot is 10 months old and the other neighboring lot is 11 months old. The management of these crops has the particularity of using low amounts of agricultural inputs, since the incidence and severity of diseases and pests is very low. This allows the development of a technological package for tree tomato cultivation with a clean production approach. This crop is preferably established in sandy loam soils with loose soil properties and is planted in a trefoil or hen foot system. Preferably for X4 or 4X3.5. This system allows for about 15% more seedlings per unit area, per hectare or per square. Once the layout is done, a 1.50 meter diameter circle of 1.20 meters in diameter is made with a digging axe. We dig two axes deep with the hoe to loosen the soil. We throw five or six kilos of chicken manure in the hole to mix it with the lime, we mix it and wait a month for it to act. From that moment on, it is left to vinegar for a month or so and then you can transplant the plant to the hole. After the plant is transplanted, after 20 days the first chemical fertilizer is applied. 100 grams are applied in each month that the plant is growing, so that the bush takes approximately 1 year to 18 months to start producing, from there you accelerate. Each month you increase the dose of fertilizer. Every 20 days she has to be fumigated. She asks you to fumigate her every 20 days. You also accelerate the baths, in terms of asking for more baths every month. That is practically where the wood comes from. In order to put the wood or the staking, the bush has to be approximately 10 months old to start tying it up. Why do you have to tie it up? Because the bush is very weak and breaks, so you have to put the wood on it and put the pita and tie it up. First of all, when the tomato plant is about a month or a month and a half old, you put the ring that is the strip to pick up each piece, to turn it around and then you release the pita and tie the bush. Because the bush is very weak, the sticks are very crystalline and they can break very easily. That is the question of trellising, and then the tomato plant goes to the biggest expense and it is only fertilizer and practically bathing to put it into production. After a year, you start to pick the first guides, and after a year you start to pick tomatoes every 20 days. 
The tomato plant starts to increase its production. You only think about picking kilos and from 20 days later, let's say, you pick 20 kilos in the first harvest and the second you can increase it to 200 kilos, the third you can increase it to 800 kilos, we are talking about a budget of 1000 palos, the fourth you can increase it to a ton and a half. From then on it already increases to 6 or 8 tons. Let's take an example of a thousand palos, in a good production, and give up to 10 or 12 tons of tomatoes in its normal harvest. Well, the useful life of a tomato plant is from 18 to 20 months more or less. There are tomato plants that go to two years of production, out after its life and growth to start producing. From then on, the tomato plants must be cut because otherwise they will catch the virus and they will not last longer. First the tomato plants lasted a long time, now they do not last so long because the virosis kills them very lightly. The tomato plant has three diseases that attack it and the tree tomato the most, what are they? First we talk about anthracnose, it can be easily controlled because there are curative inputs that control it, but we are talking about bacteriosis, which is when the bark or sap of the tree rots and there we know that practically it can be cut and still recover. But virosis has no remedy, because it is a virus for which they have not been able to get anything out of it. Sometimes it attacks the tomato plant in production, when this happens there are three kinds of virosis, there is the chronic, the mild and practically the most fierce, which is the red one. In this case, all the tomatoes fall off and the disease spreads throughout the crop, there is no remedy and the tomato plants have to be removed, the capital is lost. But when the virus is mild and is in production, the tomato plant can be removed virus tomato and good tomato until you can get rid of the capital that is put into it and can leave some more weight. These are the three most common diseases in tree tomatoes. You can catch it in the tomato plant because of the leaf issue, it starts to turn black and the tomato also starts to drop the nipple. That is where we are looking at where the anthracnose is and it is easy to detect it in the tomato plant. Because of the leaf issue it is turning black around the leaf and the tomato is also falling off. That is the anthracnose. Bacteriosis attacks the bark and the sap of the stem, it is identified when the stem begins to rot. It gives a kind of charcoal-like the stem rots and the flower rots. Practically this is the most common identification in tomatoes. When it starts to rot and the bark and sap rots, then the stem starts to fall asleep and the stem starts to fall off. Well, we discover the virosis in the bush when the stem begins to curl so much the stem and the tomato is getting veined. But there is no remedy for this one, practically the tomato plant has to live with this disease because there is nothing to do there. Neither agronomists nor anyone else have been able to find a solution to the virus. At this time we had three pests that are practically the ones that attack tomatoes the most. The moth or white fly, we have the aphid, and we have the chinch bug. What does the moth do? It lays eggs and then begins to place them on the leaf and takes over the bush completely, losing its fruit and its flower, it practically loses the whole bush. The bed bug, which is the double sucker, sucks the leaf and is also finishing. This is the bed bug and it also attacks tomatoes very hard. We are also talking about the aphid, 
it lays eggs and also does a lot of damage to the leaf. It also sucks all the bark from the fruit and kills it. These are the three most common pests in the cultivation of tree tomatoes. The cultivation of tree tomatoes in Entrerios, given the climate and soil conditions, lends itself well to large productions that can be well managed in the crop, around 60 tons per hectare per year. The commercialization of tree tomatoes is relatively easy because there is always a market, the question is the price, which can vary a lot throughout the year. Around April, May, June and July, it has the highest prices. In December it is usually very cheap, now it is relatively expensive, 1,600 or 1,500 pesos. The commercialization can be done through intermediaries, local traders or wholesalers. In Colombia, the main producer is Antioquia with the highest yields per hectare. Lately, it has also been grown in Tolima and Cundinamarca, but so far the traditional yields of Antioquia have not been restored. This fruit is mainly consumed in juice, although they have more potential as preserves, sweets and fresh. With nutritional property is quite important, especially vitamin C.